Good morning, everybody. Today is November 13th, 2019, and this is the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, and we are starting our stitch along. It is with Lori Holtz, Bringing Home the Tree. It's a brand new pattern that, uh, it's so Emma Publishers for us, for her. Um, actually, it's so Emma's named after my daughter, so I own It's So Emma. So this is the pattern. And here it is all finished up so Lily can zoom in and I can talk a little bit about what Lori framed it with. So she found that frame at Hobby Lobby. It is a eight by 10 simple frame. And then she just glued on the front some, this is like trim. This is like a glitter snowflake. And then she took her Farm Girl Vintage gingham fabric and did a covered button. So this is an idea of how you can finish it. And um, what Lori really wants to do is make everything that she does or a majority of what she does fit a standard frame so that you don't have to go out and spend a fortune finishing something because she finished this all by herself. She did leave the glass off. That's how Lori prefers it. And I wanted to let you know the pattern is full color. So like for example, when you're following the pattern, it's in color, it's really easy to see. So that's really good for beginners. We get a lot of questions about beginners and we try to make everything beginner friendly. So we have this, we have the R Floss Thread Pack and our DMC Thread Pack will be back in stock either late this week or early next week. And we're just waiting on one skein. Or you can just go to Michael's and buy your DMC. Everything is listed really nice on our website and then we list R Floss and DMC. And I'm stitching on the Silver Sparkles 14 count fabric flare. Um, I have loved it. I will say that I have not stitched on white Ada in a really long time because I've been doing all this other stuff. And I can stitch so fast. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and go into um, kind of my sew along part and then I can take questions a little bit later. Um, but first I wanted to say this finishes at on 14 count, it finishes at around seven by nine, something like that, seven by 9.25, I think. And so I just added four inches around that and cut my piece this size, which is around 11 by 13.25. So that's how I cut mine. Now there's some leftovers and uh, Denise and I have a little scrap bin that we keep in her office with all the leftovers. And um, we'll just use those leftovers for something else. And this took me an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going really fast and that's what I'm saying about white Ada. I can like, this is gonna be nothing because it's, you know, with black, I can see it fine, but I just cannot go as fast. So that's super fun um, that I'm able to go fast because I'm looking forward to being able to do something super fast. And what I did is I just used a ruler and measured two inches in here and two inches in here and that's how I started. And so I'm gonna show you some tips on stitching in hand and I'm going to show you how I stitched this row and this row. So that's what we're going to do and this one does have a glitter side and a non-glitter side. Um, the glitter does come off but actually I didn't notice any of it coming off on me yesterday so it didn't bother me at all but I mean I love glitter but I didn't notice it on my I was stitching at my desk and I didn't notice it on my desk. So when I stitch in hand First thing I'm going to do since is I'm going to take my thread, split it, and of course I have a knot, so I'm going to cut that off because I shouldn't have a knot when I'm <laughs> doing a video. So I'm just going to pull it apart. That keeps my thread really nice and even, so that's the first thing I usually do when I come back to it. I'm going to thread my needle. I'm using the Pat Carson size 26 and that's how I thread my needle. So I'll do it again just to show you how I thread mine. Pat Carson needles have um, a really fine tip but they have a big eye so you can you can thread them really fast. So when I'm doing a straight line like this, this is just a straight line, I just go all the way across and I'm gonna come back and when I'm doing it, instead of stitching just straight like this, I do turn my piece so that I have an angle and I'm gonna show you how I finish this row. I like to railroad, which is where you put your needle in between your threads and this is how I stitch in hand. So I'm gonna do a couple stitches and then y'all can ask me any questions. 
Sometimes it's hard for me to talk and stitch at the same time. And this is much slower than I normally go. I can go really fast if I'm sitting at, at my desk. And I do find that if I'm, if I'm doing something where um, there's a lot of start and stop, I will hold it much closer to me. But if I'm doing just a straight line, if you put it on a, put it on like a counter or something, you can go faster. And so I have like a little lap desk that I have in my bed that I use a lot because I do stitch in my bed a lot or there's a couch I stitch on. And if I'm on the couch, I just use a pillow that's on the couch because I have like 20 pillows. It's actually Peyton's couch. He thinks it's his couch. So it's like Peyton's couch and my couch. We're the only ones that sit on it. So let me know if you'll have any questions on railroading. I think that railroading will make your stitches lie flatter. Um, but if you don't want to railroad, you don't have to. Like, for example, there, I might not railroad there, but I'll railroad most of them, not all of them, but, you know. That's kind of... Um, we did have a question about Bloomtopia from Rita Strong. She says, when will the Bloomtopia cross-stitch be out? It is starting in February 2020. And so I am using the needle, this is the little needle minder, and I love it because... Um, it's nice and flat, and so I just throw my needle and it doesn't get lost. Like sometimes needle minders, my needle will come off because um, it's small. This one, it doesn't. And so Bloomtopia is our charity stitch along, and we have lots of floss tubers stitching along with us, and we're gonna be raising money for Make-A-Wish, and it's gonna be fun. And I can show it to you if you want to see it a little bit later. It's sitting behind all of this stuff. So super easy. This is how I stitch in hand. I'm just going to finish until this thread runs out. And then I can show you how I do this other row. Um, I do always keep my finger back there right where I'm at. And these you know, a tapestry needle doesn't have a, a sharp point, so I usually touch my finger when I'm back there, but I don't cut myself. I usually just cut myself with my scissors. Me and scissors are a little dangerous. And you'll notice when you get to the end of a thread, it is going to get more tangly. So I am more apt to railroad at the end. And this first row, when I, when I did these stitches, I did not railroad at all because you're going to cover it up. So I don't railroad that first one, just the second. Uh, from Susan Glenn, what is your secret for stitching with white? I've frogged a project twice because the stitches aren't to my liking. Oh, you know, I think that white is the easiest thing for me to stitch on, actually. I feel like it hides a lot of, I don't know why, but white, I think it's easier for me to see, but I do railroad. So if you railroad like I'm where I am splitting these threads, it's going to really help. And, you know, I take, some of you might ask what frogging is. That just means pulling your stitches out. But I... Um, if I don't like something, I just pull my stitches out and keep going. So like here, I'm getting kind of messy. My thread's getting kind of wrinkly, so I'm going to just split my threads, pull them completely apart, and then just keep going. I'm almost done with this thread. I do try to go until I can get the most out of my thread, I will say that. And when I'm working on any project, I try to do one color all at once and then move to the next color. Okay, so that's about enough of that. So when I finish, one thing that I do is I make sure I pull this, I'm pulling it from below, kind of tight, because when you pull your thread under, if you don't pull it a little bit taut, sometimes your stitch will become a little bit loose and it'll look fat. So I just kind of go under and I'm going to just pull it. Before I cut, I'm going to look and make sure that my stitch looks the same, the same as the others, and then I'll cut. And I try to cut right to the edge so that my back stays really nice. So that's how I do that row. And then I'm going to show you this row up here. 
And like I said, when I stitch, I do stitch one color all at once in the section. So if I was not doing this on live stream, I would have already done this entire row right here just to save time. And so I get my thread. I'm using my little floss flowers by Lori Holt. And I keep the one that I've, I keep one strand at the top. So I'll pull this strand out. And then I will put one of these back. I'll put the one remaining back on. And the way I do that is I just make a little loop and put it on here. It keeps it really nice and neat. And then I'll put that aside. So to start, I will kind of do this a couple times. It'll get my thread a little bit straight, not as, I don't even know the word. And I'm going to show you on this one, the way that I do one stitch at a time. And this row is all the same, so I have it memorized. So I'll start in one hole, do a half stitch. I'll turn it over. Find the loop, because I'm using two strands. Pull it through. And then when I look at the front, I want to make sure I can't see that little tail in the back or that little hump. Sometimes the hump will show. And so for here, I'm going to hold my thread, my stitches a little bit different. So Lily might have to change the angle a little bit. I will kind of roll this a little bit so it's out of my way. And I do one stitch at a time. And I can't really um, go too, too fast. I mean, I can go much faster if I don't have a camera on me, but I can't really um, go super super fast because you're doing one stitch at a time so it's a little bit harder to go as fast but I think it looks really nice and pretty one stitch at a time rather than going all the way across and all the way back and so how I do these like here I can do that and I'll just keep going So does anybody have any other questions? Yes, yes, we have lots of questions coming in. Um, okay, from Gianna Gorsuch, she says, what size needle are you using? 26 Pat Carson. Okay. And from Christine Miller, she says, Kimberly, how do you manage to stitch on black Ada cloth? I'm having a hard time seeing the holes. I use my Halo, Glow, Halo Go lamp and that has been a life changer and I take it everywhere with me. I have a bag that that stays in with the charger and I take it everywhere. I take it in my car. I can actually charge it in my car. Mm -hmm. So I take it everywhere. Um, I can't really do it without. I can do I can do 14 count black without it, but I can go faster with the lamp. Um, more are coming in stock this week or next week. So um, we're having a hard time keeping those in stock. From Pat Schmidt. How long are your threads when you start? So when I take my DMC, I will, I will unroll the whole DMC and I will cut it into a segment of eight. And then I put seven of the strands on the floss flower at the bottom and then one strand up here. So when I go to it, I've already got one out. So I divide it into an increment of eight. So I guess you would, it's about, I would say about a yard each because each DMC is 8.7 meters, I think. So if you divide that by eight, it's about a yard. And that's just the, the, the length that I like. Some people like really long lengths. I find that when I start with something too long, I get too many knots. And I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, but it's really hard because I'm right-handed, so. Um, from Shelly Edwards, was that one strand folded? Yes, so I'm working with two, oh, two strands. And on Lori's patterns, it will tell you how many strands that is recommended. Okay. And from Donna Winkler, she says, good morning, Kimberly and Lily and the Floss Whisperer. Any helpful hint for counting when you are working on over two? For counting? Um... I kind of just count in my head. I don't have like a trick. Now, I will say if 
I will say one thing. Can you find me a ne an extra needle, Denise? Mm -hmm. I can show one little thing that I do. I don't do it very often, but. But I'll show you what. There's one on the all, that one at the bottom. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So if I was doing like a super long line and I started, let's say this is my first stitch right here. We're at one and then now we're gonna be at two and we need to count over 20. You could do this and I've done it a couple times. So say you need 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I could you could just put your needle here and just leave it there while you stitch. And then when you get there, you know that you're there, you've counted once, and then you can double check it after you get get there. So that's something that you can do. And the needle's obviously not gonna hurt the fabric because that's the same exact needle you're using to stitch with. So you can do something like that. Now, when I did this big long thing, I didn't have to count because I was able to count this bottom row. So I'm hoping this bottom row is correct because if it's not, then I'll be off. And then I'll just have to frog it, which is fine too. Um, and then we had a cute comment from Dot Dot Goose. Uh, she says, I'm using the Piggy Needle Minder, and he does a good job watching over my needle. Aww. Aww. That's Little cute. Piggy. Uh, okay. And from Libby Clemens, are you going to get more dock packs back, for, back in for this project? Oh, DMC. <laughs> yeah. I made a mistake. But yes, um, we are going to get more later this week or next week. Um, and from Meredith Abney, I've been worried about the glitter. Do you think this stitch out would look good on the white opal Ada? Um, I don't remember exactly what the opal looks like, but I do think um, the more white it is, the truer white it is, the better it would look. I think the white chocolate would be a little too dark, but off the top of my head, I don't remember what opal looks like. But we can we can look and let you know what we think. <laughs> Denise has the sample if you want to look at it. Oh, she does. Yeah, <laughs> she's like waving it around back. There. Oh yes, yes, that would look great. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm over here. Speaking. You know, you're good. It's, it was funny. Yes, I think that would look great, and we have a piece of it we can show you at the end that Cheryl stitched on, I believe. Yeah, for, for uh, everyone else who's watching the close-up here, Denise was actually dancing around Kimberly for a little bit at different angles. Uh, it I was didn't even really notice. funny. I just heard her feet. I just thought she was. <laughs> I thought she was walking. Oh, just made my day. Uh, from oh Louis my Lemon. You're gonna make Denise mad. Oh, I'm great. just kidding. Like Denise is gonna be like, I don't um, want to dance around anymore. Um, I don't have any mistakes in this because it's hard. It is hard for me to do this on camera yeah uh so louise lemon says do you do something to the edge of the cross stitch fabric so it doesn't fray yes on this one denise did the little zigzag stitch for me hmm. usually i do it but denise did it for me this time but yes i do a zigzag stitch and actually it's funny because i use a juki and a baby lock and i only use the baby lock for specialty stitches and um, I actually don't have a chair at it. So when I do my zigzag, I just stand up and do the zigzag stitch. And it's quite hilarious because my zigzag is never straight because I'm obviously standing up because I'm too lazy to move a chair for just that, like, two minutes that it takes me to do that. Um, from uh, Vicki Breckner, and this is a question I had, she said, what does frog it mean? Frog it means pull your stitches out. Oh, it's the first time I've heard of it today. Oh, I, that's hilarious. Rip it. Rip it. That's hilarious. Uh, from, oh, Home Mom says, happy 50th floss tube. And then with a little clapping hands. Oh, it is yay. our 50th floss tube. Yay. yay. Maybe I should start saying the number at the beginning. Yeah, that would be cool. You have to tell me what the wow. number is, though. I'll I can't it. believe we're at 50. Oh, I can. I feel every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like stitch it all the time. Y'all are gonna like die when y'all see how much stitching I got done this week. 
Okay. So I'm just going to get to this end before I finish. Okay. Um, and from Cindy Krell, what is the DMC white color number that's brighter than white? If B or D, B5200. Zero zero. And it is, I think it's like bright, bright white. It's, it's. And from Kristen Jackson, does the pattern tell you how many strands to use for 14 count ADA for Aurifil and DMC? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, give us a like, a thumbs up if you're having fun. Give us a thumbs up for our 50th. Uh, and if you're not subscribed already, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you guys don't miss any videos. Okay, from Rita Strong, how do you calculate what size a project will be if you want to stitch it up in a different size, Ada? You divide the stitch size, which is always on the pattern, divided by, for example, if you were doing 14 count, you would divide it by 14 and that should be your finished size. And then I add four inches around for finishing. So that accounts for two inches on each side. Now obviously you don't really need that much, but I think it's better to have a little bit more than a little bit less. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and finish. And so I don't like the way that last stitch is lined, so I'm gonna pull it out. This is how picky I am, and then I'll put my needle through this thread to get it a little bit straighter. At the end, it just gets a little um, wiggly. So I'm gonna redo this last stitch because I'm OCD a little bit. And then I'm going to, like I said, make sure it looks good on the front run it through four to five stitches on the back. And then cut. And then what I usually do before I put it in my project bag is I will put my needle on the side like this. And then I just roll my project. And I will roll it where my stitches are on the inside. So I'm just gonna roll it and then when I my project bag is over here. And I'll just put it back in my project bag. And then, let's see. It keeps it, keeps the front from getting dirty and I just throw it in my bag. And in my bag has all of my floss. I'm gonna add this floss. And um, I throw my scissors in there and I put one of Lori's, um, there's like a little cap she has. I don't have it with me because it's in this bag somewhere and I don't know where it is, but I keep that in there and then I put that on the front and then I zip it up. And I can see on this one, I can see, I don't want to lose my needle, but I can see in my project bag. So that is our first week. Now, Delie's gonna pop up week two so we can talk about what we're gonna do next week. So on the bottom, the week one that says November 13th, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that whole section. And then I will probably start week two. I might do outline, I might not. And then we're gonna talk about, if you look at the windows in her car, Lori did half stitches, so it would be very um, opaque. That's probably not the word, but that's what she's getting at. And so on that, we have in the instructions how you can do a half stitch, so we'll definitely do that. And of course, if you wanted to do a full cross stitch, you could. And each week there is going to be a giveaway. All the information is on our blog. The link is below. Our blog is the Jolly Jabber. And you're gonna wanna use the hashtag FQS bringing home the tree that's in the bottom left. And um, so that's what, that's what we have for bringing home the tree. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, each week I'm gonna try to do something where I actually show stitching or a tip or you know, just how I do it. And of course, you know, I always say, do your own thing. If you want to cross stitch and, you know, do it however you want to do it. Um, you don't have to feel like it's, um, you know, just what I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jane Bromley uh, said confetti for FQS floss tube for our 50th, 50th floss tube. 
Dang. Maybe that means I need to have 50 iced teas today. Yes. I have made a decision, guys, that the, that the um, place by my house is just not acceptable anymore. I'm driving a different way to get the correct tea. And I had the correct tea this morning, so we're doing good. Yay. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I have got, that. and I... I really need to just complain and like tell them because it's a very general thing that they just don't know but I just am too like I'm just like I don't want to complain I don't want to be that person who complains all right and then uh several people say they love the rearrangement of the thread wall behind you so oh thank you did we do it oh thanks who did it Lily did you do it uh, it was me and Ashley yay great job I didn't even know yes, yes I didn't even know we did it upon ourselves but yeah so thank you that it took a minute, so we appreciate that. Uh, uh, yeah, I would think that would take a minute. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. From Susan A., how does the Fancy Floss chalk compare to the DMC whites? Um, I think the chalk is, I mean, they're really similar. They feel a little bit different, but I would say the chalk on the black looks great. Um, I feel like it's just the right balance of white with the black, like with the chalkboard black. So, um... Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not as picky about that. Um, I don't really know, but I like both. From Just Ducky, does FQS sell the magnets Priscilla uses for finishing? We're working on it. Oh. Right now, she has a link. If you go to her Amazon shop, there is a link to the exact magnets that she works. And um, I'm seeing that some of you guys have questions on the website. So I'm gonna go over that real quick, but we're not gonna focus on it too much. Uh, Kevin and Kevin and his team has been working on the website for 18 months. They worked 26 hours straight, and the last 24 hours he is now asleep. We are going to attempt, basically we're building a new website, and with that website you have to transfer all of the data. Every product, every email, every customer address, every gift certificate, every, 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 everything. So we did a data transfer the other night. It didn't go well because something happened with the server. They're gonna attempt it tonight. So the website is gonna go down around seven o'clock and it's gonna come back up around 7 a.m. Now it might come up with the old site. It might come out with the new site. We don't know. We're gonna see what the servers do. Just know that Kevin and his team, I don't know that they want their names named. Three people were up here 26 hours straight. We're doing our very best. I will tell you that Kevin is asleep right now because he will be up all night. Um, we are doing our very best. Um, and when the site goes live, there are gonna be mistakes on it because it is a brand new site. Anything you see, just email elva at fatquartershop.com. She'll make a list, she'll email it to us and we will get it fixed. I can guarantee that Kevin and I will be working all weekend on that website and do it. And it is going, you know, so that's all I wanna talk about with it because it is, uh, it is um, taking over my life. <laughs> but I don't want to like dwell on it because it is a very positive thing but um, it's just a lot of data that has to be transferred and it's very complicated and it's um, it's a lot of stuff all right we have lots of people saying thank you kudos to Kevin best of luck on the data transfer tonight yeah we're, hopefully it goes as planned yeah, we're hoping we all keep our fingers crossed and good vibes yeah and basically what Kevin has decided is if the team doesn't have it ready at 7 a.m. we're going back to the web old website we're not going to do this whole back and forth, back and forth stuff. All right. Okay. We have lots more questions uh, from oh Jody goodness. Smith. <laughs> uh, she says, do you think for windows you could use one strand like in chock full jars to make it look more see-through? You could. You could either do a half strand with two strands, a half stitch with two strands, or a full stitch with one strand. And you know, that might be something, maybe I do a couple, maybe maybe I can start the car and do one window one way and one window the other. Like not the whole thing, because I don't want to frog the whole thing. And then it'll give you the look and you can decide what you think and then we'll vote. And then whatever y'all vote, I can do. And then I'll rip the other one out. Uh, Judy Kepler says, where did you get the bag? The Bloomtopia oh, bag. Oh, we sell this bag. It is called Bloomtopia and it is um, and we sell this little charm, it's super cute. And you can also use this charm for your needle if you want. Um, you could just keep it, like if you were on your table and you want to put your needle there, you could. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we sell the bags and basically Kevin and I will donate $10,000 next year. We donated 10,000 this year and Moda will donate $10,000 and we're hoping to raise 30,000 from all of you guys. We have a quilt along and a cross stitch along just to raise money. Money goes directly to make a wish. Kevin and I never see it, but obviously we sell products um, to go along with it. Um, from Caroline Yonetta, have you used GMC Etoile? No. Etoile? We bought it though, right? Mm -mm. We haven't bought it. We bought the case. Oh, no, no, okay, that. Okay, sorry, I was thinking something else. No, I haven't used it. It's, um, no, I don't have any experience. And we sold the little case that had like all the new skeins. Do we still have it? Probably not. I don't think we still have it. Um, mm -hmm. But you can get all of that at like Michael's. I think that would be kind of hard for us to sell, but yeah, I have no experience with that. And uh, from Betsy Verico, how many strands for DMC for the stitch along? Two, if you're using 14 count. And from Anna Deal Davis, I'm new to Q snaps and having trouble getting my fabric square in the Q snap. Any tricks for accomplishing this? Um, the way that I did it when I used to use Q snaps is I would put the Q snap down on on like a flat surface instead of in the air because when I would do it in the air I could never get it right so I would do a flat surface put my fabric on top and then I would do maybe left right or top bottom first stretch it and then do the other side so I would say flat surface do two sides pull it do the other two sides and pull it but the flat surface is what really um, helps and from Gigi Odom, has Kimberly done any of the little stitch girl patterns? Are they easy to follow? I ordered the frost one from you and it should be delivered tomorrow. I haven't. I haven't. And we do have some new um, cross stitch patterns that came in. Um, we're not loading new products today, obviously, because we're going to a whole new site. Um, but there are some cute stuff that Denise is working on kitting and it's super cute. And I'm like, we're, you know, when we kit stuff, the real thing is, y'all want to know the truth. We want to stitch it. Denise and I want to stitch it. <laughs> so we get it free. So either I'm going to stitch it or Denise is going to stitch it so that we can show you and then we can sell it. But they're really cute. Um, we have some new cute stuff. So I'm not going to have as much new stuff at the end just because we have a lot of stuff in the works. Okay, so we are doing another stitch along because, you know, we got to keep busy. And um, Lori and I found this pattern. It's called Christmas Alphabet by Prairie Schooler. It was printed in 1997. And I guess when they retired, they sold their rights to all their patterns to Hoffman. And we were in the craft corner, I believe, or the craft. Lily's been there with me before. Oh. Craft Central, Craft Central, Craft something. It's in... Salt Lake City, cute little store. The, the owner is super nice and they have lots of samples. And when I was in there, Lori and I saw this and instead of it being, hor what is this? Horizontal. Horizontal, it was vertical. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm doing mine. I got, look at how much I got done. So can you zoom in? Oh my gosh, I got so much done because when you have a website down, <laughs> you have nothing else to do. So this is, um, thanks. And so I have a little DMC pack that I put together and I'm super excited about it. And one thing that I did to help me is I want to be on track for Christmas. So Denise did this little spreadsheet for me because we're all about spreadsheets here. Mm. And it's like a little, oh, it's upside down. So she kind of put the day and what letter I need to work on every single day so I can be done by Christmas. And so I'm ahead five days, four days now. But so that's how, that's like an example of how I keep myself on track. That's how, um, sometimes you'll ask that question and that's just an example of giving yourself a goal for each day. But I'm super excited about how mine looks. And Cheryl, is working on hers. This is Cheryl's. She's working on Historic Beige by Fabric Flare. Yeah. And is it 14 count? Uh, 32 count. 32 linen. count linen. And she's going to do hers horizontal. So mine's going to be vertical and hers is going to be horizontal. And they look totally different. Cheryl is using the called for colors and I am using my pack. So there's that. And then we're going to do some pop-ups. So this is Lori Holt, of course. 
my BFF. She is going to stitch along with us. Obviously, we saw it together and we decided we would do the sew along. Her, if you haven't followed her on Instagram, that is her Instagram name and she is going to be doing the same thing I'm doing as she's going to do vertical. Mm -hmm. Vertical, sorry. I can never get that. And um, Lori is using, she's making up her own DMC as she goes and she's gonna send me those colors and we can do a floss pack later if um, if y'all want that. And she is stitching on 30 count, a 30 count fabric from her stash. It's, um, it's not something that we sell. And then we have some other people sewing along with us. Look, oh my gosh, Aww. Priscilla and Chelsea. So look, okay, so the front dog, I gotta talk about the dogs. Yes. The white dog is Ronnie. The little black dog is Piper. And then Nala is in the back. No. And she sent this picture last week for me to show. But when she sent it, I didn't see that it had the Christmas letter because I was just looking at the dogs. Mm. So I was supposed to show this last week, but obviously I was just paying attention too much to the dogs. Mm -hmm. And she's using her Be Merry floss pack that we sell of Classic Color Works. And she's just putting colors in as she goes. So that was her start. And then we've got some other pictures from her. Oh. Lily's dying over the dogs over okay. here. Okay, and then there, so so she, you can see she's got the C and the H, and so she is doing, they're going to do Christmas, just the words Christmas, and then she's going to do some kind of banner. I'm sure she'll finish hers and Chelsea's separately. So that's Piper, and um, Piper likes to bite. Oh. So I'll be a little scared of Piper. Oh. And then the next one is Chelsea. So Chelsea's, they're both using Monaco, and they're both tea dyed and um, Chelsea's just, she's using the same thread pack and she's just doing um, colors as she goes. And I think she's using black for the outline of it, but super cute. So we're super honored that they are willing to stitch along with us. And then this is another one of Chelsea's. And so they're doing Christmas and they might do the word Mary. They're not, they haven't decided yet. And then I want to show one other thing from the pattern that I noticed. Oops, can I have the pattern back? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so one thing that I noticed when I was stitching this. Okay, Lily, got to zoom in so I can yes. see. i got to see where. Okay. So on the S, it's a snowman, right? So it's like super cute snowman. And then I was looking down here. And there's an S down here. And it has a Santa. Oh. So they took the Santa from another letter, I gotta find it. They took the Santa from the K and put it down here on the S. So I just thought that was kind of creative because see, they have a snowman over here and I guess they didn't want to do this. They wanted to do the snowman and the Santa. So I just thought that was kind of creative. So you could have fun moving stuff around if you wanted to, to do that. I just kind of noticed that and thought it was kind of fun. So there's Christmas alphabet. And then if you want to ask questions, I can answer any questions. The one thing I will say about this, a couple things. I'm stitching on 16 count chalkboard black because I don't, um, I want it to be able to spit on an easel and I didn't want it to be too large. Ooh, 16 count. I'm a little bit done with 16 count. I'm going to finish this up and we're just going to go right back to that 14 count Ada. I love me some 14 count Ada. 16 and 18 is killing me. Um, it's really hard and they're tiny. The good thing about this pattern is each of the squares, like the frames are the same size. So um, some things that I'm doing to save time. Can I have mine back? Sorry. I'm gonna show y'all a couple things that I'm doing to save time because I obviously want to save time. So what I'm doing, you don't have to zoom in or anything. The first, the what I'm doing is I'm doing it by the row. So when I did this row, I did all the frames at one time because that's all the same color, I stopped. I did the S and the U at the same time because it's green, and then I did the T. So I did the frames, then the letters, and then I did all the white at one time, all the green at one time, all the red at one time. And I did the same thing when I went here. And so it can take me about, I don't know, 10 hours to do a whole row, maybe less. But I mean, I do all the same colors in the row at the same time to keep, that's one thing that's really keeping me going fast. Um, because I started this row on Saturday morning at dance, I think, pretty sure. So, or maybe not. Anyway, I did all this row since Monday. 
So, and that's one thing that you can do to save time. So there's that, and I obviously have more, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Yes, uh, from Garyland62, are you able to put the snaps in those zipper bags, or do you cross stitch without a hoop? Snaps, yes. Oh, the Q snaps. Sorry, yes. Um, do you know what size this would fit? No. Measure, can you measure it? Yeah. We have a little, we have a little um, cutting mat right over there. Mm -hmm. So she can tell us what size that would fit, the small one. The other way. Uh, eight. It'll fit the eight inch. Yeah, eight by eight square would fit in there. Uh, and then Lori Holt said Craft Center, that's the name of... Craft Center. So if you want to go to Craft Center, they're super cute and they love Lori. So every time they go in, they talk to Lori for like an hour and I just shop. <laughs> and I think I annoy Lori at the store because like, okay, when I shop, when I go through the store, I go through real slow. And then I go back real slow again and she's like, come on, get out of here. <laughs> From Little Workroom Craft, she says, I really wish we can get Floss Tube Fat Quarter Shop over here in the UK. I watch every week. You all do a great job. Thank you. Yeah. I think we ship to the UK. Yeah, we ship yeah, to the we UK. We ship there, yeah. and, and YouTube-wise, you can watch us anytime from the UK. Yep. Um, from Greta Carter, uh, she says, can we get the spreadsheet for the alphabet? Do you have a Kimberly Floss Pack? I do have a Kimberly Floss Pack. Uh, for the spreadsheet, I mean, I think Denise, to be honest. Uh, deleted it because I was like looking for it. I couldn't find it. Oh, no. So she deleted it, but then I found it in my little, in my bag because I keep this with me everywhere. And I was like, what's that little piece of paper? And then I was like, oh, there's the spreadsheet. And so I'm super excited to be ahead. But this is one way I do this with a lot of things, quilting, cross stitch, anything, work, goals. And if I get ahead, then it makes me have like a little bit of energy, like, oh, I'm ahead, you know? gets me a little bit motivated. Uh, and then also from Garylin62, she says, if you think of looking out on the horizon, then that is horizontal. Okay, okay, let me, that's yeah. true. Okay, let me tell you, I got some emails from Gabriel and he was like, you know, like if you say horizontal, your mouth goes up and horizontal, side to side and vertical. Anyway, I was like, my mouth, what? I, that's gonna confuse me more. Horizontal horizon, that's good. I think that I might be able to Honestly, I probably know the difference. It's just when you get on camera, you become like, you don't want to, I don't ever want to say the wrong thing. I want to be as accurate and as authentic and as like, I don't want to ever make a mistake. So I think I get in my head a little bit with that. So I'm going to show you some other whips because I'm working on some other stuff too. So the first thing is, this is a brand new pattern called Away We Go by Country Cottage Needleworks. Super cute. We have the pattern and the kit. And I decided that I wanted to make it. So here we go. I have a lot done. Ooh. I know, I have a lot done. So um, I'm using the called for colors. We're using DMC for our kits. And this is 14 count chalkboard black. And I, again, set goals for myself. And you'll see that it curls up. So this is how I keep it in my bag. Oh, it's just like this, folded in the bag. And so, there it is. So I'm super excited about this. Um, my goal for this week on this one is to finish the house and all the snowflakes. So that should be pretty easily attainable. And you can see that right here, one thing I'm doing is what Priscilla taught me where you do the outline and then you fill in. So that's one thing I'm working on. Super excited about this one. I don't know how I'll finish this one. I can't decide if I'm going to send it to Priscilla or if I'm going to find it. And then Cheryl is working on hers, and she's using 16 count Ada Navy. And we are going to be carrying some more 16 count and 18 count because we, um, Denise is going to order some more colors. And that looks so pretty. And it, okay, I want to show you the houses next to each other, how the difference in the size. And this is why I can't see 16 count. Because there is a pretty big difference. If you put it right next to each other, I mean, it is, uh, you get a totally different look. And the wreath on this pattern has some French knots. And I'm liking the way my wreath looks without any French knots. So I'm not adding my French knots. I'm going to have a wreath with no red. I'll tell you that right now. I already decided that. So super cute. Thank you, Cheryl, for doing that. Hers is super pretty. And then, this is Cheryl's. 
Terry. Terry's. Oh, sorry. Terry. So Terry is in our club, and she's stitching on a different fabric, though. From her stash. She's stitching from her stash, and this is the linen, I think. And she always changes her colors a little bit. She always changes her mason jar. And do you know what color she's using? Uh, she did cherry tomato for the jar. Cherry tomato for the jar. And then this is licorice red for the... And then this is her back. And so super cute. And this pattern is Priscilla Blaine's pattern with hands on design. It's called Chalkful. And there's going to be a series of seven of them. And I love how Terry always changes hers. All of her jars are different. She hasn't done any of them in Aqua yet. And then the brand new pattern called Christmas Calendar. It's by Tiny Modernist. We are sold out until later this week or next week because it's been selling like crazy. You can make it as one chart or individual and this is Cheryl. So last week I showed you the 25 and she's going to do, she's going to, did you find that thing? Did you bring that thing from your house? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so Denise found something she thinks is going to be cute for that. So we'll bring it next week. And she found it just at Michael's. But basically what Cheryl's going to do is similar to what she did with her Halloween that I showed, is she is going to do a countdown to Christmas. So she's obviously starting in reverse. So that's 24. And this is 23. And also one thing she's doing is she's not adding the frame to it. You can either add the frame or not add the frame. And she's using the call for colors, and it is super pretty. Can you zoom out of my face? Yes. Uh, so more patterns will be available very soon. So that's um, stuff we've been working on. And then, oh my gosh, Happy Camper by Lori. Look, Priscilla finished it for me. Oh. I, it looks so good, guys. Denise brought it to my office and was like, do you want to see Happy Camper? And I was like, yeah, I don't even remember what Happy Camper was. And she brought it, and I was like looking at it, and she's like, it's yours. I'm like, oh, my gosh, look how pretty it is. It's so pretty. So Priscilla did this for me. Um, it's the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch, if you have not subscribed to her YouTube channel. So this would be kind of like metal mm -hmm. that's kind of got, like, some paint on it, maybe, mm -hmm. you think? Like, yeah, that they've, like, yeah. faded away. And then this is fabric, fabric, and then she finished this, and then she made a bow, and she put some trim. This is a butt covered button she made, and see the covered button fabric matches this fabric. And then she's got cotton, so super cute. And we have a link below to the frame, or maybe we don't. I'm gonna read it to you. Hobby Lobby, the number is 1672963. Super cute. So I'm going to take it home and put it in my living room. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. Now I am because it's got some pink and aqua. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. I'm going to put it right here. So pretty. So pretty. And then um, some other things we've been working on is Starry Night is also a prairie schooler pattern. And Cheryl made these. She used 14 count opalescent white. So this is that opalescent white, if you wanna zoom in, Lily, that somebody was asking about if bringing home the tree would look good in it. And so it's got sparkle, but it's got some gold, maybe it's just got a little bit, it's got way more sparkle. And um, she used the called for DMC colors and gold metallic floss. We do have the gold metallic floss on order. So there's one she made, and this is another. Super pretty. And then Cheryl made this. This is the small Mary that Kathy and Priscilla designed. So right there, there's the Mary. And she put it on navy, and it's so pretty. And I bet this navy is a section of the other one mm -hmm. that she used from the same thing. So those are the things that we're working on. Um, and then let me know if you have any questions because I even have more after this. Oh my gosh. So pretty. Okay. Um, Gigi Odom, she said, how long has that taken to stitch so far? I believe it was about your uh, ho. Ho ho? Away you go? Yes. Okay. 
I call it ho, ho, ho. Okay, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I would say about 20. A lot. I shouldn't look at that. I shouldn't record that. <laughs> Um, from Deanna Stoutenberg, are you still doing a stitch along for Lori's Quilty Love pattern? Yeah. Later. The pattern's not out yet. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the pattern's not out. Yeah. The pattern's not out yet. Uh, Judy Gibbons, what is the stitch count for the calendar squares? The, I believe the tiny modernist one. But which, I think she's asking what Cheryl's doing. Oh, maybe. I don't know what Cheryl's doing. We're going to have to count. Um, Denise will look, or we'll go ask her real quick. I don't know. Okay. Um, and I did see a person asking earlier about... Um, oh, wait. Quilty Love is in stock, and we will do a stitch along, and we will probably do that in January, February, so that it's closer to Hall Closer to Valentine's Day. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the holiday holiday <laughs> um yeah someone was asking about different cloth counts we do have a video about that on our floss tube channel um so feel free to use that as a resource for that and we're going to be adding more um we just needed to see how things sold and so like denise is adding a little bit of colors and then some people email customer service and then um we order it also with ada cloth just so you know when we order it it might be on back order so we do have some colors already on back order so I went back to Jolly July with Denise and we had some fun last week finishing Jolly July. So all of the, sorry, I have hiccups. All of the Jolly July are finished, but not fully finished. So now we're gonna finish them all. So I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna show you. Okay, this was a frame that I found at Hobby Lobby. The number is 1718816. It's a little paddle board, it was $9.99. And we added a little twill, uh -huh. something twill to the top I don't know twill ribbon and then what we did is um, we finished it with sticky board and on the top one we have videos on all of this actually so just go watch the videos yes, um yes. so this is fa la la yeah and in the Five. videos oh sorry go ahead heart and hand sorry so this is it's not on there uh, there's one and then this is Merry Christmas I don't know who this is by either. Heart and hand. Heart and hand, sorry, heart and hand. And this one we did a little bit different, but we do have videos on how we finished all of these. So Denise and I did these together. And if you have questions about the supplies on how to make these, they are also linked within those yeah. videos. Merry and Bright uh, from Christmas Cheer Chart by Heart and Hand. And all the floss colors, everything is listed. But I just wanted to show, I'm so proud of these. This is Holly Jolly by it's on the Christmas triplet pattern by Heart and Hand. And we got these little paddle frames a while back, so I'm not sure if they still have them. We got them in like March. This is Christmas Cookies by Country Cottage Needleworks. And so we're hoping they don't fall. <laughs> this is Christmas Cheer by Country Cottage Needleworks. And we have, let's see, Snow Love by Country Cottage Needleworks. So we had a lot of fun picking out the fabrics and finishing them, and we're about halfway done. 25th and Jingle by Christmas Cheer Chart. So that Christmas Cheer, Christmas Triplet, and Christmas Cheer 2 have a lot of charts in them. This is Heart and Hand, so I use the same chart for a couple of them. This one is Gingerbread Cookie by Little House Needleworks. This is Mary. Oh, no. no. Santa from Christmas Cheer, same chart, hard in hand. And this one I put a little button on his little hat. And this is Mary from Christmas Triplet Pattern from Heart and Hand. So super excited about Jolly July and getting back and finishing them. Our plan is to do a little bit each week. So next week we'll do a couple more 
and then the week after we'll do a couple more and then on our set in Christmas we're gonna go buy a cute little Christmas tree and um, put all of the ornaments on the tree and have it decorated I wanted to originally have them in my house um, but I think that um, y'all should get the enjoyment of it I don't know so we're gonna just do it here do you want to do shout outs? Yeah, let's do shout outs. Okay. Oh my gosh, this pattern is so cute. This is the ad Academic Stitcher and she does some really cute stuff. I love to look at her Instagram. And um, this, we sell this PDF. Can't think of the designer right now, but super cute. And I love how she finished it. And so the next one is, oh my gosh, that is Mary by Priscilla Blaine and um, hands-on design and this is Connie Dunn and I think she's in our club and she got it all finished super cute and then this is November cottage of the month by country cottage needleworks and it says only nine days late but at least I got it finished <laughs> that's funny because um, mine are never finished and that's Jana Glosson I like her finishing too and then um, this is the unlikely quilter and she's got all her supplies ready for bringing home the tree and she even found the frame so you can see that she's got this exact frame right here. She's ready to go. She doesn't just have the supplies from us. She's been to Hobby Lobby. And then this is Mary by the Sloth Stitcher. Again, hands on design, Priscilla Blaine. And um, this is Ingrid the Quilting, which is she's got all her supplies for bringing home the tree. And at the bottom, if you guys have not seen these, they are new tags, like gift tags. One is like a quilty set and one is like a Christmas set and they are so cute and the quality is amazing like it is like the best paper Lori you did a great job on that that paper it's like it's like not it's better than cardstock it's like uh scrapbooking it's so good anyway I have them ready to go for Christmas in my house I'm like I snapped those up because I was like I'm not gonna let those go by and then the quilty one my favorite one you can see it peeking through that's like the little it's like a little red tomato pin cushion it's super cute and then Aggie Rachel, so she must be a and fan, so she did Hello November, and that is, um, the pattern is called Well Hello There, and it is Hands on Design is the designer, and um, super cute. We had some kits, and we have the pattern. I'm not sure what we have at this point, but I made a lot of those. I never finished them, but they're sitting in my closet. I might need to finish them. And then this is cute. This is November by... Um, Hands-on design. It's not hands-on design, though, is it? I, don't, I think the designer is not hands-on design. She's hashtagged her. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a year of Christmas, a year of celebrations cross-stitch, so it is hands-on design. Sorry. And that one comes in one full pattern, and we showed that last week that Cheryl made it, so super cute. And then we're back to the same one. And I wanted to talk about last week, Sue Ellen had Sue, wait, sorry, sweet Sue Ellen, had we had shown her finish last week super cute and so she was super nice and emailed me where to find this and other people did so thank you guys and then sweet little Denise went and bought them for us at Michaels so we linked to the below where you can find them at Michaels and there's a white one like a, the, the insides slightly the same but the out, you can get white or black and you can put any of um, Lori's 24 by 24 pieces within it and so super cute so we got that I just want to follow up and it was funny because people were like people commented on the video because I do read all of the comments um so when he commented and was like well when Sue when Sue Ellen emails you you need to tell the rest of us don't just keep it for yourself I'm like oh I'll tell you <laughs> so it took a couple days but we figured it out and that's super exciting that we found that so let me know if you'll have any more questions um let me know what you're stitching on. I would love if you commented below and let me know kind of what you're stitching on. Um, when we know what you're stitching on, we know who you like. I mean, obviously, Hands on Design, uh, Priscilla Blaine, Country Cottage, Little House, Tiny Modernist, that's what I'm seeing most of. But if there's other designers that you love, um, I would love to know below also. And so you guys have a great week. Um, next week, I'll be back with more Christmas alphabet, um, bringing home the tree and the away we go. So you guys have a great week and I will see you next week. Bye guys.
Thank mm-hmm. you.